एम जी एम मूवी स्टार हेडी लेमार एंड म्यूजिक कंपोजर जॉर्ज एंथिल व रिवॉर्डेड एंड यू एस पेटेंट इन नाइनटीन फोर्टी टू फॉर देयर सीक्रेट कम्युनिकेशन सिस्टम सो दिस वॉज नथिंग बट फ्रिक्वेंसी हॉप स्प्रेड स्पेक्ट्रम टेक्निक विच दे हैड यूज सो बेसिकली दिस दिस स्प्रेड स्पेक्ट्रम टेक्निक्स इवॉल्ड ड्यूरिंग वर्ल्ड वॉर ड्यूरिंग वर्ल्ड वॉर द नेसेसिटी वॉज टू मेनटेन द सीक्रेसी एंड टू हैव अ सिक्योर्ड कम्युनिकेशन सो ऑन द बैटल फील्ड वेयर द कम्युनिकेशन वॉज अट मोस्ट इम्पॉर्टेंट द टॉर्पेडोज कुड बी गाइडेड सो इन वर्ल्ड वॉर टू टॉर्पेडोज वेर यूज and torpedoes could be guided by radio control but the radio transmission could also be jammed by the enemies confusing the torpedoes so the main requirement was secure communication and low probability of detection so on the war field war front the communication which used to take place so the probability of de- detection had to be minimum so the, these are the few war sites which are shown on which communication used to take place during 1942 or world war 2 so why we should go for spread spectrum so what is the necessity of it so we need spread spectrum to have anti jamming capabilities secure communication low probability of detection or low probability of interception of the signal Low, proba- low probability of position fix and to have multiple access techniques now if you see basically you have an modulating signal as an input and you have a spread spreading process to which a pn sequence or some code is given as an input and this information say, signal then gets spreaded over at the output the information spectrum or the modulation spe- uh, signal spectrum is spreaded over a wider range now here the information signal occupies a wider bandwidth at the output then what was required originally so the different applications where the spread spectrum techniques can be used so you can have gps satellite system or this technique is also used in uh, cellular communication bluetooth or in lan wan or internet connections railroads and uh, transportations so this spread spectrum technique can be used in all of these applications for spreading of the information signal so as to maintain high security or to get high secure um, secure data at the output so this spread spectrum techniques basically can be divided into or you can say we have two techniques direct sequence spread spectrum and frequency hopping spread spectrum so we before going to the spread spectrum techniques and the details of direct sequence and frequency hop we need to know how is the code generated so basically the information signal is given a spreading process occurs on that signal to that spreading process we have one input given is the code which get mix which mixes up with the information signal and that information signal spreads on a wider bandwidth at the output so this code what is this code how is this code generated and why this code should be random so we will just see something about this code which is known as a pseudo random noise code or pn sequence or a pn sequence code so before going to this technique we'll understand this code and then this code is mixed with the information signal so as to get the spreaded spectrum at the output so basically what are the different blocks so to generate a spread uh, spectrum or the pn sequence the we need the number of flip flops are used so depending on what is the length of the code we can use the number of flip flops um and generate a pseudo random code so in this diagram now we see the number of flip flops 1 2 till m m flip flops are used and the output is given back to some logic there we use a hardware and the hardware output is given back or fed back to the input so the output of the flip flops goes to the hardware and the hardware output is given back to the input and likewise some sequences generated 
in a deterministic manner at the output side but since the length of the sequence is too large it is maximal so the repetition one cannot find out after how many states the signal is repeating and because of which it is known as a random signal and this sequence keeps on repeat, repeating after deterministic number of states since the length of the signal uh, or the length of the sequence has to be very very long so as to give the randomness now as an example we will consider three flip flops the output of the third flip flop is actually the pn sequence which we are going to take as a code now that output is given to the xor gate the output of flip flop 2 is also given to the xor gate and the output of the xor gate is fed back to the first flip flop so you can see the truth table wherein the outputs are shown at stage 1 2 and 3 and the number of states so during first state what is the output of all the flip flops during second state what is the output likewise in seven states what is the output at the stage 3 or the output of the third flip flop which is the pn sequence which is generated so here since three flip flops are used 2 to the power n minus 1 is the number of states after which the sequence is going to repeat so 0 to 7 are the steps shown over here which is the output and after seven states the same output is going to repeat again and that will keep on repeating but we see it as a random so as an example here just three flip flops are taken so we can make out very easily but if the number of flip flops go on increasing if it is 5 or 16 or 32 in that case it is impossible or highly difficult for anyone to decide after how many states the sequence is repeating we will see what is the output and we will see few randomness properties so when that signal or when the output sequence can be called as a random sequence so it has to satisfy three randomness properties which we will see one by one now here we have seen how is the output and what is the sequence of the output now output sequence is one which is shown over here it is 000 100 11011111 now taking this output sequence we will try all the properties and see how these properties should satisfy so as to call this sequence as a random sequence if these properties are not satisfied we cannot call this sequence as a random sequence though whatever output is generated so the hardware and the feedback which we are giving should give you the maximal length and also the repetition should not be in between it the repetition of the states should be after the maximal length that means 2 to the power n minus 1 after this only the repetition of the state should take place now the different properties which a pn sequence should satisfy the very first property is the so all these properties are known as randomness properties and very first property is a balance properties now for a good balance the number of bin binary ones differs from number of binary zeros by at most one digit so count the number of zeros in the output sequence count the number of ones in the output sequence see by how many bits the number of zeros or number of compare this number of zeros and one and check out whether the uh, uh, this property is satisfied or no now here we will consider the sequence as 0010111 so is there a balance so here the number of ones are four number of zeros are three so yes the balance property is satisfied because the total number of ones in the sequence is one greater than the total number of zeros present in the sequence next property is a run property a run is defined as a sequence of 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 a single type of binary digit that means here again we'll consider the output uh, sequence which is 
one 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 one. Now in this output sequence, how do we count the number of runs? So wherever zero changes to one or one changes to zero, so there you will count that as one run. For example, zero 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 is one run. Second run is one. Next. Two zeros are following that. That is third run. Two ones are following. Fourth run. Again zero. Fifth run. One. Sixth. Zero. Seven. And all four ones is eight. So total number of runs in this output sequence are total number of runs are eight. Now amongst the runs, you will have to count how many runs are of one bit, two bit, three bit. And four bit. So amongst the runs of ones and zeros in each period, it is desirable that about one half the runs of each type are of length one, about one fourth are of length two, one eighth are of length three, and so on. Now whatever we have said this, we will apply on the output sequence. Now here the total number. the total runs of zeros are equal to 4 half of the uh, runs of length 1 is 2 one fourth are of length 2 which is equal to 1 so just see the sequence in this we will find that so total number of runs are 4 4 out of which out of 4 2 should be of length 1 and one fourth that means 1 should be of length 2 which this sequence is satisfying and hence this run property is also satisfied now coming to the third property which is correlation here in this if a period of sequence is compared term by term with any cyclic shift of itself so you will have to consider the number of agreements and compare it with number of disagreements and the difference should not be more than one count that means what your output sequence is known to you just shift that output sequence by one digit so that is a cyclic shift now write down the sequence one below the other so one zeros whatever original output sequence is below that you are going to write down the shifted sequence and then compare the bits one on one so count the number of agreements and count the number of disagreements agreements is when one is below one that is agreement and if it is zero below one it is disagreement so count the number of agreements and count the number of disagreements put it in the equation wherein rx tau is equal to 1 upon p where p is the total number of bits in a output sequence Here the total number of bits in the output sequence is 15. Number of agreements and number of disagreements. What is uh, that? The difference should be um, not more than one digit. So here in this case, the difference is one. Number of disagreements is eight. So it will be one upon 15. Seven minus eight, which is equal to minus one upon 15, which indicates that this. property autocorrelation property also is satisfied so whatever sequence we had considered 15 bits as an output sequence what we had taken so four flip flops 2 to the power n minus 1 15 number of bits in the output sequence so for that example all these properties three properties are satisfied and now we can call that sequence as a random sequence and this sequence now can be used as an pn sequence along with the information signal to give the spread spectrum as the output for cm sequence uh, uh, to summarize uh, for pn sequence uh, the pn sequence is generated by an algorithm using the initial seed all the shift registers are cleared um, it is resetted only one shift register is set to one and then that one keeps on shifting as per the hardware which is used and the feedback given this is actually a deterministic algorithm it is not actually random 
but since the length of the output sequence is maximum the number of states after which the uh, output sequence again goes on repeating is after a very long duration and that's why every time you stop your oscilloscope, uh, oscilloscope and see the sequence it appears the output appears as an random because the time instant at which you are stopping the sequence is different if the algorithm is good the results pass reasonably all the tests will be positive that means the random sequence randomness properties will be satisfied all balance run and autocorrelation all these uh, properties or test will be satisfied by that output sequence and you need to know the algorithm and seed to, pre to predict the sequence so whatever pn sequence you are using on the transmitter side to generate the spread spectrum the same sequence should be known on the receiver side to retrieve the uh, information back so this is all about the pn sequence and we will see how this pn sequence now can be used to generate direct sequence spread spectrum and frequency hop spread spectrum techniques.